Hello guys and welcome to episode 30 of the Spring Boot Security course. Now we are going to implement authorization using JVT. We already created a JVT authentication filter and now we also need to provide the authorization part. So we, based on a token that was generated, we need to read it, we need to grab the user details from, from the database and we need to um, you know, configure the authentication interface with the username, password, and user authorities. And that's what we're going to do in today's episode. Now, before we get started, I would like to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. Cool, now let's get started. To create a GVT authorization filter, we just need to do the same thing as for the previous one. So we need to create a class, we'll call it JVT authorization filter. Okay, and this class needs to uh, needs to extend the basic basic authentication filter. Okay, and we need to create a constructor that matches and I'm going to use this constructor here right here. Okay, so we have a class that extends the basic authentication filter and we also need to add in another dependency which is our user repository we are going to use it to extract uh, user details based on the username that we read from the token that we are going to receive okay and you know just like for the authentication filter we need to extend some functionality to make authorization work for us, or better said, to you know have access to the authorization data. Because the token in by itself doesn't contain that information. The token just has a subject. In our case, if you remember correctly, the subject is the actual username. And when we provide authorization based on that username, we need to retrieve the authorities from the database and use them throughout our application. So the method that we need to implement is this one, do filter internal. Okay, and this filter internal receives two arguments, you know, uh, the HTTP server request, HTTP server response, and we have this filter chain because in Spring Security, you know, we create a filter here, but there are, uh, the security pipeline is composed of multiple filters. So we need to, after we do our stuff, we need to delegate uh, and we need to let the rest of the filters do theirs. So we need to delegate um, to the rest of the pipeline. Okay, but We'll see how we can do that in a couple of seconds okay and this method i'm actually going to copy paste it and we are going to walk through it and i'll make sure that everything is easy to understand okay so uh, right here we have request uh request request we have response here just making everything now importing all the classes and making the final modification. So this is GVT properties. This is of course GVT properties. Okay, and this method we actually need to have an implementation for it. So create method, get username, password, authentication, and we'll pass in the request. Cool. Um, and of course. I know it's going to return. Oh, I might have made a little mistake here because I want authentication, not this authentication, but this authentication. Okay, so um, authentication, authentication. And yeah, so basically I imported the wrong class because I imported something here from OpenSSL. And actually the interface that I'm interested in is the one from Spring Core. Okay, so we have this class and we need to provide an implementation for do filter internal. Okay, so what you're doing is, um, remember that um, after the first login request, we are going to provide authorization. So uh, each subsequent request will receive 
the token in the format bearer space and GVT token, okay? So what we do here is we read uh, the header string, so we read the authorization header and we grab it. Then uh, we try to see if we have uh, the token present. So if there's nothing in there or if the token doesn't start with bearer, then okay, we do nothing, we exit, okay? We let the rest of the pipeline do its stuff, but you know, we just return. You know, there's nothing for us in here. We, you know, break the program right here, right now, and the user will not be authorized to do anything in the application. Now, if the header is present, then we are going to try and get an authentication class using this method, get username and password authentication. Okay, so based on the username, we are going to try to extract the user from the database and add his authorities in there. Okay, and if everything is okay, uh, we are adding this authentication in the security context holder and then again, like we did here, we let the rest of the pipeline do its thing. Okay, now let's see how we can implement the get username password authentication method. And again, I'm going to copy paste it just to speed things a little bit. Okay. Um, GVT properties, this is the GVT class, so I'm oh, sorry. So I'm going to import it. I'm going to import this as well. This is GVT properties. I played a little bit with the app and I decided to modify this class. That's why we that's why I have to do this over and over again. This is the user principal. So we have here user principal principal. This is user principal. And I mean okay, cool. So how do we get on authentication object based on our request? Okay, so again, uh, what we're doing is we are grabbing the token from the request, okay, which we know we have because we already checked it in here. So we definitely have a correct token in there. We perform the validation before we call this method. And now if the token is not null, we try to decode it and to validate it, okay? So on each request, we need to get the token and to validate it to see if the user has permissions inside our application, okay? And we do that by using the GVT library that we imported. Okay, so basically we are using the algorithm, um, the same algorithm uh, HMAC512 with the secret that we stored in our GVT properties file to decode the token. So if you remember in the authentication, we are actually setting the subject to username and then we are signing it with this algorithm and the secret. And now we have to decrypt it using the same algorithm and the same secret, okay? So uh, we decode a token and then we verify it, you know, uh, and we also need to remove the, the prefix. So we need to remove the bearer out of this place, okay? And then we are grabbing the subject of the JVT token, okay? And the subject is the username. So if the token is valid, then we should be able to grab the subject and that subject is the actual username. And if we have the username, we can go to our user repository, find the username, okay? So we have a user object here and then we are building a user principal and then we are building a username password authentication token from that user principal, okay? And this username password authentication token needs a username and we're also passing in the authorities because, you know, we need to be aware of the roles that our user has uh, inside this application, okay? And then we return this object. So to explain it again, okay, uh, this is the end point that will hit on every request when we are performing authorization, okay? First step, we send username and password, we get a token in the response. And here for authorization, on each subsequent request, we are sending that token until it expires with each and every request. So obviously we have to read the token from the authorization header. And if the token is present, then we are trying to build an authentication object. And when we build that authentication object, we are basically decoding the GVT token to extract the subject, which is the actual username. 
and if you grab the username we search in our database for that username we grab all the details about him and then we are building the username password authentication token and we make sure that we pass in the authorities because otherwise our application um, would not know what permissions that particular user has okay then we add this authentication object to the security context holder and then the we let the other filters do their thing so this is how the gvt authorization filter works okay so uh, you know at start it might look a little bit difficult i mean it surely took me some time to understand the mechanics of it but once you look at this class and you start to think about um, what's happening under the hood then you know things are starting to make sense so now that we have the authorization filter we are ready to configure uh, Spring Security to use a JVT authentication and authorization and we'll see how we can do that in the next episode before we close I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button also if you found this video useful please hit the like button and share it with your friends if you have any comments thoughts or ideas for new courses just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because i would love to get feedback from you guys you can also find me on twitter at romanian coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com until next time have a great day and write amazing code goodbye